We all face them regularly. Life's little challenges, trials, hardships, vicissitudes. Vicissitudes. Say it with us. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. We're going to talk about those and how you can still be happy. So for several seasons consecutively, uh, Tony Romo was the starting quarterback for the NFL's Dallas Cow. Dallas. Did I say Dallas? It's Dallas. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. And many of you know who Tony Romo is, blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, then this kid, Dak Prescott, gets drafted out of, I don't even know what school he went to. He was like a 10th round pick, hmm. practically a free agent, hardly even a draft pick. He comes aboard. Right. Mm -hmm. Tony Romo gets hurt. Now, in the world of sports, if you're a starting stud quarterback or starting center on the basketball team or whatever, you're not sort of the, the, the general belief is you don't lose your job to injury. Meaning, if you're injured, go get well, and when you're better, come back and you take over for whatever guy has filled in for you. In this case, it was Dak Prescott. Well, he filled in for Tony Romo for about nine weeks. And over that nine-week period, the Cowboys, who hadn't even had a winning season, I don't think, in a few years, and certainly hadn't been to the Super Bowl for 15 or more or whatever, maybe not 15, but it had yeah. been quite a while yeah. since these other days of yore with, what's his name, Blondie Star Boy, and oh, uh, Emmett Troy Smith, Aikman, Aikman, Aikman yeah. and all that. It's been a long time. So uh, he comes back after nine weeks. Dak Prescott, this unheralded, unknown rookie, it's not even in quotes, led them to eight straight wins. And like an 8 and one record while filling in for Tony Romo. Tony Romo comes back. He has every right to say, and he's not. No, he's... He's from, uh, you know... We know that Romo is a very popular Latino name. I don't know. Maybe it's Italian. Could but be. he comes back and he goes, and everyone goes, oh, no, there's going to be... Oh, what, what are the, what's management going to do? What's Jerry Jones going to say, the owner? How is he going to handle the emotion and all of that? Tony Romo, the stud that he was, basically diffused the whole situation by saying, well, look what the kid's done. He's taken my job. He's done way better than I did. We're having a winning season. Let him play. I'm good. I'm okay to sit on the sidelines. I'll be over there and I'll support him from the sidelines. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Now, why do I bring that up? Why do I bring that up? Uh -huh. Because in today's seven ups of happiness with Scott and Jeff, uh, we're talking about sucking it up. In other words, facing life's inevitable changes that will be thrust upon you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just got to handle it. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to buck up, buttercup. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. There was a lot yeah. of ups in there. Right. And then there was kind of an upward hey, motion. Hey, please. <laughs> oh. How many of you, by the way, have lost your job, right? Something kind of, again, sneaks right up on you. Well, I quit right? most of yeah, my yeah, but, well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but that's another story. Yeah, but right. I remember uh, just being surprised with, with a job loss, right? They call you in the room. Well, you've been identified as part of the reduction in force. You know, they got all the legal terms going on there, right? And I was kind of devastated and shocked for a while. But you know what? Every time something like that has happened to me, it's like a nudge in a different and better direction. Mm. And again, again, we've talked about this before, about making up your mind to be happy, right? Well, this goes right along with, hey, suck it up, right? As I just continue to kind of just keep moving forward. Well, and change is inevitable. Yeah. It, it, it's always going to happen. Life keeps moving forward. You and I and you, we, we all just keep getting older. Sometimes our skill sets become less and less valuable and perhaps even obsolete in our work environment or mm -hmm. in other particular associations that we may have. The point is, is that you just got to either keep, you know, honing the, your skills yeah. and getting better, doing your continuing education or whatever it is. But at the same time, don't let the bitterness and the, 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 the ire yeah. of seeing new young and coming pups come in and take mm -hmm. over your jobs, yeah. your positions. They have better ideas. The whole new generation, mm -hmm. which is an episode unto itself, I'm sure. And that's where kind of suck it up kind of comes into because there is a bit of a, an entitlement sense going on with yeah. some of the younger folks today yeah. and the whining that they don't get what they deserve or that they've seen everything that their parents had and they want that 25 years before their parents could get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, again, that's, that's perhaps for another time. Yeah. I tell you, one, one time I had to suck it up was, uh, well, and, and this goes for everybody too, when I started to lose my eyesight and I started to lose my hair, 
eh, stuff that I don't have anything in, any control over. Yeah, a few, you know, I guess what, 20, 30 years ago, I did have the RK surgery, right? You know, and, and so my eyes were pretty good for a while. And they said, hey, when you start to get in your 40s, you're probably going to need glasses, which I did. But, you know, you just kind of, okay, I've got to roll with it, not to pine for yesteryear. Yesteryear? Yeah. I don't think, I think that's a made up word. Okay. Now, of course, there are some changes that even us old people uh, can avail ourselves of that are actually quite a blessing in our lives. As? As, for example, he mentioned the RK surgery, right? I mean, for me, and this goes in my top three, you know, favorite technological or changes or advancements that have occurred that have actually been a blessing for me. I was, I didn't even really need to suck up because I was ready to go, this is great. Mm -hmm. No matter what age, I don't care what whippersnapper invented LASIK. You know, you got yeah. the RK, which is a, a diamond cutting your yeah, eyeball. Yeah. A few years later, I went and got the laser surgery. And I'm telling you, for a guy who wore glasses his whole life and was losing oh, contacts yeah. and getting them rolled up under the back of my head, scratching my brain, to be able to then go on trips and swim and run and do all these things without any assistance at all has been an absolute blessing. Of course, I recently started wearing contacts again and thin glasses because, as mentioned, after a certain milestone... Even lasers can't make me see as clearly as I want to. But that's my first. That's one of my. That's my first on my top three. That's your first. Okay, I, I go for my third. So as far as suck it up things that I've had to deal with, that uh, I'm just you know whatever is my bad back. That that has been okay. one of the changes in my life. About yes. Nine years ago, I don't know what happened. I was just sitting on the couch in the wrong position for two and a half hours watching YouTube videos, <laughs> right? With, with with my nephew in Germany, and I got up and all of a sudden my right leg is just kind of weak and whatever. And three MRIs later, three doctors later, no surgeries, mind you, but acupuncture, chiropractic therapy, no one still can tell me what's going on. So it's it's been, now the reason I say that, I've had to suck it up, is because it's kind of something that is out of my control right now, but it's also taught me how to appreciate what I have. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll be walking in an airport, right, on the way to a seminar or whatever, and I'll see somebody in a wheelchair, or I'll see somebody with a cane, see someone with a cane or whatever, and I'll say, you know what? I'll go ahead and take my bad back. You know, give me that. I'm fine. So it's helped me to really appreciate what I've been blessed with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perspective. Yeah. Perspective is a huge principle in being happy. And it's part of what he's talking about, of choosing happiness. You know, he probably is in a situation where the pain is such that it would be easy to not be happy. But you choose happiness anyway. Uh, number two for me, the changes in my life. The big one is that everyone's an actor now. I've been an actor since I was a little kid. I've been doing it since I was a little kid. Yeah. I, I think I just said that. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's what I do. It's who I am. I know how to do it. I could read since I was three. I get it. I know how to do a character, blah, blah, blah. I can memorize words. And now, every day, I think 1.5 million kids wake up and say, I'm going to be an actor. Hmm. I can do that. It looks fun. They make a lot of money. And I'm good looking. So I've had to just suck up the fact that everywhere I go to auditions or other places of work, there's going to be younger people that have the same dreams and ambitions as I do, but when I ask them, how long have you wanted to be an actor or why did you decide, they'll go, oh, I don't know, I was just doing something else and somebody said, you're pretty cute and it looks fun, so I'm doing it. Suck up to the fact that there's only so much you can read, but just last, I guess it was about two months ago, I discovered the world of audiobooks. I'd never really gotten into audiobooks much. Okay. And so now I'm able to kind of just read five times as much more than I used to. I'd still read traditionally, right? At night especially. That's when I'll read a traditional ebook or a standard book. But when I'm driving in my car on the way to work or on the way to the airport, if I'm on an air airplane or whatever, oh my gosh. And the fact that you can speed them up to 1.25 or 1.5, the regular speed, you know, now you're hearing stories about George Washington. You know, I mean, I don't go that fast. But, oh, I cannot tell a lie. Been, I did touch on that yeah. cherry tree. <laughs> but that has been such a great change for me. I just love it. So a boon in technology, ebooks. Yeah. My final one is fatherhood. As far as changes in my life, certainly nothing technological there or innovative. I'm pretty sure other people have been doing it for a long, long time. But for me, one of the greatest uh, joys, challenges, and blessings of getting older has been being a dad. It's made me a different person and by far has made me a much happier person Overall, even though I do find there's a lot more temporarily unhappy moments, cumulatively, as you work through those, the big ball of happiness at the end is way mm -hmm. worth it. Yeah. So That's actually on my list, too. I got marriage. 
Right yeah, there. well, mine's better. Yeah, yeah, sure. Honestly. I mean, because I'm talking, you know, fatherhood is like really, yeah. it's so much more noble than just being married. Because, yeah. you know, when you get married, it's just all about you and her and just kind of the joy that comes from that arrangement. Yeah. But when you're talking about being a father, you see, you're, you, I'm just better than you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Disclaimer at the bottom. Number one for me. <laughs> Is, Marriage? Uh, n well, yeah, that that's one. But Did you the, change it? The one, the one thing that, that I wanted to mention, the, the most impactful change for me, one of it, which is uh, a change of heart. I mean, for mm. me, uh, you know, when you get caught doing, uh, you know, the same thing over and over again, or you're in a rut, or wh whether it's with your personal life or your work life, uh, all of a sudden you have an experience that causes you to have a change of heart towards someone that you might feel badly toward, or even you might be feeling badly toward yourself. And you know what? Finally, something happens, and I'm going to change. I'm going to make the change, and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't even feel like uh, uh, the old person anymore. It's just fantastic. It's been for me, anyway. You want to be happy. You really, really want to be happy. Make sure that you discover the things in you that, at least based on a societal benchmark, appear to be wrong with you. So, yeah, I mean, if life deals you a difficult hand... There's no way that you're going to get that thing reshuffled and redealt. Generally speaking, you, you play the cards that you're dealt. But not in Vegas. Well, play them anywhere you want. I don't care. That's, that's your thing. But make it your thing and just suck it up and handle. And you'll be happier if you do. So are you feeling like you can suck it up now and <sighs> deal with more things? I know I am. Right? You know, if you really like it, of course, you can always hit the like button. Ooh. You can hit that subscribe button. All right? We would love it. And it would help us to not suck. <laughs>